Hey, it's Liza Lawrence with Wonders and Miracles podcast. This is my mini message, episode 160, Tell Your Story. About a week ago, I gave a speech at a conference called Power to Become, and I was invited to speak at this conference to share my story, and I thought I'm going to share it on my podcast as my mini message. So here you go. Once upon a time, God came to a man and said, I have a work for you to do. And the man was very honored and excited that God would invite him to do a work because he loved God and he wanted to serve him. And God said to the man, every day, I want you to climb that hill and push that boulder with all of your heart, might, mind, and strength. And the man agreed to this calling and he got right to work. That very day, he climbed the hill and he pushed that boulder with all of his heart, might, mind, and strength but the boulder never moved. The next day he woke up tired and sore and he climbed the hill and he pushed that boulder with all of his strength, but the boulder still never moved that day either. Day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year, this man climbed the hill and pushed that boulder with all of his strength but the boulder never moved, not even an inch. And after all this time of working so hard with no results, the man became discouraged and he felt like a failure. And he came to God and he said, God, I have done the work you've asked me to do. Every day I've climbed that hill and I've pushed that boulder with all of my strength, but the boulder has never moved, not even an inch. I've failed. And God smiled at the man and he said, you haven't failed. Look at yourself. Look at how strong your muscles are. Look at how determined you've become. Look at your diligence and willingness to serve me. Look how disciplined your life is. Look at how you have transformed because you've done the work I asked you to do. I never asked you to move the boulder. I only asked you to push it. I'll move the boulder when it's time. What boulders are you pushing in your life? And what stories are you telling about that? Is it a story of discouragement and failure? Or is it a story of strength and transformation? So today I'd like to share with you my story of strength and transformation. I was born happy, like most babies are. In fact, my parents used to say they broke the mold when they made Liza. And it took me a long time to even know what that meant. But in essence, it means there's not a single person like me or you. There is no other person on this planet that can do what you were designed and created to do and be. And for me, in my early years, I was designed for joy. I was a joy magnet. I loved life. I truly believe I was excited to come here. I was also a very independent and determined child. For example, I potty trained myself before age two, trying to keep up with my two older siblings. But like all children, the wounding of life started to happen. And while that spark of joy was still there, it started to be overlaid with sadness and fear and heartache and pain. And I started pushing against some pretty heavy boulders. I was the middle child of six, one boy and five girls. And at the age of five, I was very excited for a couple of things. Number one, I would get to start school and then I would be a big kid. And number two, our neighborhood had a tradition that you could only join the neighborhood sleepovers the year you were old enough to go to school. So I would get to join the sleepovers. But the first neighborhood sleepover that I went to, I was molested that night and it changed my personality in some pretty dramatic ways. That joyful, innocent, excited about life little girl became fearful, mistrusting, angry, and aggressive. I started lashing out at people, mostly my younger sister and my mom. I directed a lot of my angry pain at my mother because in my little mind, she was supposed to have protected me. 
but she didn't. She let me go and get hurt. And the story began in my mind that my mother didn't love me, which wasn't true, but it became my internal narrative and story. And the wounding built from there. Every time I got in trouble, which was a lot after that, every time I didn't meet an expectation, every time I was mean and didn't do it right, I would tell the story that I wasn't good enough and that I wasn't lovable, which you can imagine was not a very empowering story. I became deeply jealous of my younger sister because my mother seemed to love and coddle and protect her, but not me. But in my own mind, I didn't actually deserve my mom's love because I was a bad girl, so I couldn't have received it anyway. And the tricky thing was growing up in the 1980s, there was very little awareness and sympathy for emotional needs for children. By today's standards, I would have been diagnosed with anxiety by second grade. I woke up every morning with severe stomach aches. I threw up many times at school because of worry. I became a deep people pleaser and I worried so much that I wasn't good enough and that people would be disappointed with me. If only I could do everything right, then I could be loved and be lovable. But it was hard to do everything right and be kind all the time. My life continued and typical development by third grade, I learned that you can't be nice to everyone or your friends will kick you out of their group. By fifth grade, I learned to keep my mouth shut as the other girls were gossiping so that they wouldn't have anything to say about me. And to top this all off, at age 12, I had the traumatic experience of being raped at the city park. I had run away from home earlier that day because my brother and I had gotten into an argument. It was not a good day for me. So let's just say the wounding became deeper. My self-worth plummeted. And that negative internal dialogue and story increased. Yet, not many people would have guessed this about me because I had learned to survive by smiling through the pain. That's what people wanted and expected. And I had become very good <laughs> at meeting other people's expectations at this point. And I will say it wasn't all bad. I had so many people who loved and supported me and that natural joyful self would bubble out often, especially when I felt safe. But I did keep those wounds bottled up tight inside, never to be fully expressed until years and years later. So many years later that I was 28 years old, I had two children and I had just experienced two miscarriages in a row. My body was a mess, <laughs> so I decided to go get some help, and as I was working with a doctor to balance my hormones, I asked the doctor, I said, how important is it to deal with the emotional traumas from your past to help the body heal? Intuitively, I believed there was a connection there, and he smiled at me and he said, actually, it's the most important part, but not a lot of people want to go there, and I said, I want to go there. I was tired of feeling the constant fear and pain. I didn't want to feel the heaviness of life anymore. I didn't want my wounds to continue to hold me back. I wanted freedom. And so began my journey of healing. It was a journey of forgiveness of myself and others, a journey of letting go of the things that were not serving me in helpful ways anymore. It was a journey of discovering what pushing my boulders had done for me. And in that process, I had a spiritually transformative experience that changed my life forever. God came to me in a very tangible way and helped me move my boulders. In the hours of deep prayer, working through, forgiving my past and my limiting beliefs and my traumas, I felt the grace of God literally enter the top of my head and flow down into my body system. It was a very magical, mystical experience, and it's very hard to explain what actually happened, but this tangible 
feeling of love entered into my heart. I felt my heart unlock and open up. I felt all of the wounding, painful emotions that I had stored for years flood out and dissolve completely. And it was replaced with this intense, nurturing, healing love. It was a love that I had longed for for many, many years. And I truly had a change of heart. I could see very clearly that I was not a victim to my life, that my experiences had helped me grow in empowering ways. My struggles had become my strengths. And I was filled with intense gratitude and love as I reconnected back to my true self in a way that I had been longing for. And in that moment, the joy, the play, the excitement for life came rushing back in. And I experienced my true inherent value and worth. I didn't have to earn love. I didn't have to be worthy of it. I just had to believe it and receive it. And when this new understanding started to grow in my mind, I could then start telling a new, more empowered story. Things like, I am enough. I am lovable. I love myself. But let's be clear, my BS or my belief system didn't change overnight. Those programs in our brains are challenging to change. They're hardwired in there, and it took a lot of work. Just like you can't go to the gym and do a rigorous workout one time and think, well, I'm so glad I never have to do that again. I'm fit for life. It really doesn't work that way. It takes a lot of practice. Now, my story is the human story. It may look different for each of us, but the theme of struggle and growth is universal. We all experience struggle and boulders to push in life, but the stories you tell yourself over and over again will become your BS, your belief system, that inner narrative. The man pushing the boulder came to God with a failure and victim story. But God helped him see a new story, a story of strength and transformation, just like he did with me. And the truth is, this life is designed to challenge us and offer necessary struggle for growth. And you might be right in the middle of your struggle and wounding story. And that's okay. Let's validate that. Life is hard sometimes. But guess what? You don't have to stay there. There's more to the story. As you heal and overcome and learn how your experiences have strengthened you, you will one day become grateful and then be able to tell a new story, an empowered story. So what is the story you're telling yourself right now? And is it time to learn to tell a better one, a more empowered one? I'd like to share five simple steps that I've used over the years with myself and clients that I've mentored that have helped us learn to tell a new story. Number one, awareness without judgment. The first step is just to become aware of your stories. When we tell our stories over and over again, they become so unconscious, so automatic, like that we're not even aware of them. So simply see them. And don't judge them. There's no shame in having disempowering stories. We all have them. Just become aware of it because you can't change anything that you're not aware of. Step two, compassionate inquiry. Dr. Gaber Mate coined this phrase, and I love it so much. Uh, but question your stories. Why are they there? What experiences have created these stories and do it with compassion and kindness because most often they come from our wounds. Are these stories that you tell helpful? Are they even true? What would it look like if you didn't have to believe these stories and you could let them go? And then my favorite question, are these stories serving me in disempowering or empowering ways? Our stories have served us. That's why we have them in the first place. They've helped protect us in some way. But are they still protecting you? Are they still helping and serving you? Or are they holding you back? And if they're holding you back, it's time to tell a new story and let those go. 
So my third step is letting them go, forsake it. This is a process of forgiving the experiences with, once again, compassion. There's a lot of great tools that can help with this, but one of my favorites is just being grateful for the strengths you've gained and the lessons you've learned because of these hard experiences and pushing those boulders. Being grateful can help you move through it a lot faster and let them go. Step four, it's time to reframe and tell a better story. One of my favorite things with this is make a list of all of your strengths, your talents, your gifts, the things you love, the things you're grateful for. What are you good at? Give yourself permission to celebrate the greatness within you. Because the truth is you are a unique being with unique life experiences that have shaped you into who you are. There is something you can do better than anyone else in the whole world. And there are also unique needs out there. And when those unique needs are matched with your unique strengths, you can be a force for good in the world. Step five. Repeat the story over and over again. Repetition is so important. You have planted the seeds of a new belief. Now water them with repetition. Here's why affirmations are important and they work. You're literally rewiring your brain. You're retraining those neural pathways to believe a new story. Now, this whole process takes a lot of honesty and self-compassion and practice. This is the art of becoming who you were designed to be. Now, I know that sometimes our strengths can seem intimidating. At least they were for me. I remember when I was a teenager, I actually had a dream one night. And in this dream, I was standing up on a stage with, in front of a large audience and I was speaking. And I sensed that I was a motivational speaker and it terrified me. And when I woke up from this dream, I had a panic attack and I started crying and I started praying. And I said, please, God, do not ask me to do these kinds of things. This is too scary. I'm not capable of it. Please, please don't make me do this. But guess what? He didn't make me do it that day or even that year. He baby stepped me into it. And, you know, in my early 20s, I started teaching or speaking in front of a classroom of 20 kindergartners, which was not that intimidating. In my early 30s, I started teaching or speaking up at a university in a classroom of 50-ish young adults, which were slightly more intimidating. And now I've been invited and asked and have been speaking on stages in front of large audiences. And is it scary? Yes, <laughs> you bet it is. But I've built up to it. So when God gives us talents and strengths, he also prepares a way for us to grow into it. One of my favorite quotes is by Marianne Williamson. This is from her book, Return to Love. She says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God and your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So your job now is to take a really good look at yourself. What's your story? What boulders have you been pushing that have helped you build strength? And how have those boulders helped you become who you were designed to be so that you can serve the world? You were chosen for a time such as this, and you have everything you need inside of you to accomplish your destiny. 
It's up to you to tell your story to the world and how you tell it to yourself and others will make all the difference. And with God, all things are possible. He can move your boulders. So start telling your story of strength and transformation. Thanks for listening. Hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.